What is your favorite part about power supply design? Okay, unless you're into that sort of thing, most likely it is the last part of your design that you tackle. Maybe it's because you don't want to get lost in all of the certifications you have to keep in mind. Or maybe it's because sourcing all of the parts for that power supply just doesn't sound like fun. I'm with you, my friends. That's why we turn to power modules, right? They save us board space, make our jobs easier, and they probably save us some cost on our bomb as well. But have you considered where power modules and switching regulators are headed in the future? I have three words for you. 3D power packaging. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Power modules can bring a variety of benefits to electronic system design, including reduced board space, shorter time to market, and easier sourcing of materials. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Louis Boucher from Recom and I discuss the benefits of Recom's switching regulators, the details of their advanced 3D power packaging, and how you can leverage Recom's expertise in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Recom. Hi, Louis. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So today we're going to talk about the next generation of switching regulator. And for those of you not familiar with Recom, we are a Austrian company which provides power supplies globally. We're original manufacturer, create DC-DC, AC-DC, onboard, offboard power supplies. But today we'll be talking about our switchers. Excellent. So let's talk about those switchers. But before we get started, Lewis, what all will we be covering today? So we're going to start off with why you should use power modules. We'll get into our R78 legacy switching regulator. Then we'll go to about our next generation of switching regulators. And then the advanced 3D PP manufacturing that makes this possible. Also talk about power modules we have for automotive applications. And additional value that Recom can bring to you. And we'll close off with some application examples. Excellent. So, Lewis, let's talk about power modules. What kind of benefits do you think they bring to the table? So, in my opinion, one of the main benefits is shorter time to market. So, free up engineering resources so they do not have to design their own discrete solution. Power is often the last portion of the design. It's sometimes nice just to have a module that's ready to be dropped in and no further um, action needed. And then you can just make your deadline. Certifications are also very important. Our parts all come pre-certified, so you do not need the time-consuming and expensive process of certifications. Also sourcing, our modules are their own circuit, so there's only one part number and one manufacturer associated with it. You don't have to look for many different components, and hunting down those components can be a hassle, especially with today's lead times and getting that all sorted out. Power modules is just the one. Recom's expertise is another value that you will have as well. We have an EMC lab that specializes in creating EMI filters, and it can also help with any EMI issues that may arise while using our parts. And you get great support from Recom Engineering, both from our headquarters as well as from the factory. Fantastic. Now, speaking of Recom, what kind of switching regulators does Recom offer? So the R78 is one of our bread and butter products. It's a non-isolated replacement for linear regulators with up to 2 amp output current. E-series available for select output voltages as well. And the idea is you can replace the linear regulator with just this drop-in switcher. And linear regulators dissipate a lot of heat and kind of waste a lot of power and lose a lot of efficiency this way. R78s are switchers, so they switch on and off, which allows for higher efficiency. And there's a lot of uh, applications this is good for. Control boards, regulating battery sources, and comms boards. And in our little graphic below, you can see there's a 48 volt battery, two of our switchers, 48 volts goes in, 15 comes out, and then to make another rail from 15 to five with another switcher. So a lot of different applications where this is helpful. Seems like it. So are there any new packaging practices for power modules in particular? Yeah, this is actually the new techniques that allow for us to create our next generation of switching regulators. This is a 3D PP or 3D power packaging. So today we'll be talking about this use in the RPM, RPX, and RPL series. These all offer a high power density from half an amp up to six amp output current. Strong thermal performance and minimized EMI as well. So if you're looking at the graphics, at the top we have the RPM. 
So this is showing multi-layer PCB board with plugged vias going through it. The electrical components are all on the top PCB layer, and the plug vias help transfer the heat generated away from the hot electrical components on the top layer throughout the package. And then the RPX is the middle graphic, and that's just the components directly on a metal lead frame, no PCB even. And then the bottom one is the RPL, which has components such as the IC embedded right into the uh, PCB board, and an integrated inductor, and all this saves a lot of space in a tiny package. So basically the idea here is we're using 3D layering. So that's where 3D comes from instead of just thinking of it as a 2D PCB. And this really helps save a lot of space as well as help mitigate a lot of heat. So better thermal performance as well. Excellent. Now, Lewis, what about this next generation of switching regulators you mentioned? So the next generation is flip ship technology and is surface mount DC-DC buck converters. They all offer adjustable voltage outputs as well as evaluation boards for testing purposes. So we're looking at the RPX, RPL, and RPM family, and they range from half an amp to six amp outputs. And then the blue card, that is the evaluation module for the RPX series. And this has all the different functionalities, easy and ready to be tested on it that this part can offer with uh, no need to make an external circuit to test it. You can just see this is right for your application. Then the next slide shows how output current and input voltage are kind of related. So higher input voltages, you're going to have to have a lower output current as well as lower input voltage, you're going to have a higher output current. So the RPM is basically the base model for the RPM family with high output current, six amps, but a lower input current. But if you need the higher input voltage, you can use the RPMH which is the high voltage version of this part with up to 65 volt input and then one and a half amp current output. And the RPMB is sort of a middle ground. Okay, so Lewis, these solutions can also help with board space, right? What kind of savings are we really talking about here? So the RPX is about the sixth the size of the R78E. So this can really save a lot of board space. The RPX has a couple of different families. The 4.0 and 2.5 have slightly different package sizes but you can still save a lot of board space. You can kind of see for yourself just how small these parts really are, uh, the RPL being the smallest. The RPM is larger than the R78E, but it has more functionalities and lower height. It also can go up to six amp output while the R78E is limited to one amp output. So in height constricted applications, the RPM is a good option as well. Great, so can we dig into the details of the RPM series a bit? What kind of specifications are we looking at for this one? So the RPM has a very impressive efficiency of up to 99%, has trimmable output voltages from 0.9 volts to 6 volts, and has the standard 3.3 and 5 volt in there as well. Excellent full load thermal performance, up to 100C for some of them, and sequential startup for multiple units, as well as an inverted output configuration possible for providing a negative rail. So this all comes on a 35 pad LGA package with short circuit protection, overcurrent protection, and over temperature protection. RPM comes in a six sided metal case shielding, metal can we call it. So this is uh, great for thermal management as well. So what about the RPMH? How is this solution different? The RPMH is the higher voltage version of the RPM. Also a buck regulator power module, but because it's higher voltage, it can take up to 65 volts on the input, as well as with thermal performance up to 100 degrees C. So there are more standard outputs as well, 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, and 24 volt versions, with trimmable outputs from 2.6 to 28 volts. Once again, the inverted output configuration, and then also the short circuit and overcurrent protection as well. So this schematic shows the sequential startup for multiple units with the RPM series. So if you wanted to start up a couple of startup converters at different times, you can kind of delay each one to have a softer start. You just need to use this general application schematic with the power good, remote sense, and control pins, and then you can set this up to your timing needs. So you also mentioned RPMB, right? What's all included in this solution? So the RPMB is sort of the middle ground. So it has 2 amp and 3 amp output currents with a input voltage of up to 36 volts. Standard output versions include 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts, and 15 volts, with trimble voltage ranges from 1 to 9 volts and 9 to 24 volts. So a medium input voltage with kind of the middle ground of output current available. The excellent thermal performance of up to 100 degrees C is also included. 
power good, remote sense and control pin functionalities, the inverted output configuration as well, and then short circuit, overcurrent, and over temperature protections. This schematic shows how the remote sense is laid out. So you can use the remote sense pin not only for trimming, but also for seeing what voltage is actually being delivered at the load. It could be long PCB traces, and there could be a potentially significant voltage drop. So the remote sense pin can detect if there's voltage drop it needs to be adjusted for, and then maybe it'll boost up how much voltage is at the output. So what if I need a 3-amp output? Yeah, so we have the RPL 3.0. This one has a 3-amp output, point-of-low buck converter, adjustable output voltages in our smallest package, 3 millimeters by 3 millimeter footprint. Low profile at 1.45 millimeters. It comes with short circuit protection, and then also the power good and remote sense outputs. There's also going to be an RPL 3.0A coming out soon. This is going to be encapsulated. This part is just open frame. And then there will also be an RPL 2.0 coming out, so keep your eyes peeled for that. The RPL 3.0 has 4-volt to 18-volt input range, and then can adjust this to a 0.8 and 5.2-volt output. So uh, if you're going from 12 to maybe 5 volts, this would be a good solution. So what if I need a wide range of input voltages in a compact package? Uh, yeah, we have the RPX series, which is very compact, but also offers a very wide range of inputs. So the VN for this is 4 to 36 volts with 0.8 to 30 volts output. So there's a lot of standard output currents as well. 1 amp, 1.5 amp, 2.5 amp, and 4 amp outputs. And some of these come in slightly different package sizes. The RPX 1.0 and RPX 1.5 comes in a 3 by 5 millimeter footprint with 1.6 millimeter height. Protections include short circuit, overcurrent, and over temperature protections, as well as under voltage lockout, which is good protection to have if there is a potential of high input currents arising and low input voltages. If that happens, your converter will be protected then. And then the RPX 4.0 has adjustable output from 1 to 7 volts, the same protections as well as the 2.5, but the 4.0 is a little bit higher, 4.1 millimeter height. So... Lewis, automotive power modules are a big topic in electronic engineering today, but what makes these parts suitable for the automotive industry? So the RPX 0.5Q and RPX 1.5Q are the same kind of part as what I just showed with the other RPXs, but is what makes them suitable for the automotive industry is their AAC Q100 qualification. This includes the use of wettable flanks on our package. Wettable flanks allow for easy visual inspection of solder joints, which is a requirement in the automotive industry. Then the RPY 1.5Q is different, however. All the RPXs and all the other converters talked to this point have constant voltages, while the RPY is constant current, 1.5 amp output. It's still a buck switching regulator, but is intended for driving LEDs in the automotive industry. So it's AEC Q100 qualified as well. It says 0 to 100% pulse width modulation dimming, and 0 to 1.5 amp trimmable output as well. Some additional values that Recom can provide is our parts conform to reach and row house, as well as class B EMC capability when we have an external filter. Now, these external filters are very basic, just requiring a couple of easily accessible components, such as some resistors and inductors. So the example we show here is for the RPM. We also have tech support available, which is a email shown below. This email is also heavily monitored. It's not just a black hole that your emails go to. I look at this email address as well. So if you have a question, feel free to send us a message about any recon products or if you think one of these is right for you. Excellent. So, Lewis, what kind of applications would be a good fit for Recom power modules? So, there's many applications we use our parts in. Some of them include industrial foam sprayer, which uh, we have using two switchers, reduce voltage to 3.3 volts and 5 volts. So, I have a heat pump for in-home use, which is a display screen that requires 5 volts, which a switcher is used to deliver. And compost appliance, we have switchers on the main board control system, and then also nurse calling stations, which needs a stable voltage sent to the LCD screen. So we have switchers in that as well. And then we have a couple more application examples here where uh, Recom has been used. So industrial cooking, higher voltage rail inside that needed a 3.3 volt for point of load application. So a switcher was used there. Server room cooling systems have used our products as well. Home audio, we've been on boards for amplifiers to speakers. 
in manufacturing quality control. There's a 24 volt signal that detects insulation faults and wires. We then branch off of this 24 volts with one of our switching regulators. Excellent. Well, this has been a lot to take in today, Lewis. Can you recap your main points for me? Yeah, certainly. So main thing I want you to remember is that Recon provides cutting edge power modules, the next generation of switching regulator. These modules will save you board space and Recon can help shorten time to market are able to achieve EMC Class B performance with up to 6 amp output current. We also have wide input ranges, provide additional pin functions and protections, as well as automotive grade parts available. So truly, Recom has a converter that's right for you. I'd like to thank you all for watching. My name is Louis Boucher. I'm one of the applications engineer again, located out of Denver, Colorado. And feel free to contact me from this email shown here, L. Boucher at Recom Power, or you can contact the tech support email as well uh, with any questions you may have. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, Lewis. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Recom. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal. Thank you.